Hello and welcome to the SuperMath iDesktop tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn some important concepts and the most basic structure of data in the SuperMath GIS software. So let's get started. So let's talk about pinpointing a specific point on a map. As we know, we can express the position of a point using two coordinate values. That is, the latitude and the longitude, which are stored as a record in a database and can be used to pinpoint its location. These X and Y values can then be used to extrude the 2D map on a 3D globe scene and pinpoint it with a symbol as shown. That is the symbol right there and this here is what a record looks like. This pinpointing can be done for a virtually unlimited number of X and Y combinations. So you could have a hundred or more points shown on a 3D globe using a symbol that corresponds to the X and Y values in the respective records. So the data stored in the databases can be rendered in the form of a line, as shown here, or a polygon, as shown on the right over here. The fundamental difference between them is that the former, that is the line, allows us to draw open lines that aren't in a loop, while the latter, which is the polygon on the right, is a closed shape. A line is created using a record in the database that contains coordinates that are generally different from each other, unless the lines intersect somewhere at a point. Whereas in the case of polygons, the first coordinate and the last coordinate must be the same in order to produce a closed shape, because that is the nature of a closed loop. As you can see over here, the first coordinate in the records over here and the last coordinates are the same. So that, for example, if it starts at a point over here, it goes on according to the record coordinates and then it comes back to this point to complete this looping polygon. So apart from point, line and polygon data, we also have more types such as CAD data, image data, network data and raster data, etc. And these data are all stored in different data sets of the database. So we will now talk about what data sets are and why they are very important in the SuperMap GIS software. So a data set is a collection of similar types of data which can be used for different applications. The supported types include the following. Point data sets, line data sets, polygon data sets, text data sets, tabular data sets, network data sets, computer-aided design datasets, land group datasets, image datasets, and raster datasets. Now this all seems like a lot, but we will talk about these in detail in later videos. So we talked about datasets and data sources in the previous slide. We will now see what they are. A data source consists of various types of datasets and is the physical storage for spatial data. And you can have multiple multi-type datasets, such as image, polygon, point, line, and text. Storage of data source can be done in one of two ways, the file data source and the database data source. The file database is local and uses the .udb plus .udd and .udbx extensions. The database data source, on the other hand, is a remote database that iDesktop communicates with for data access iDesktop supports popular database types such as SQL, Oracle DB, and MongoDB, etc. Let's talk about the workspace. Now, if you want to open the data in the data source and use it for mapping, we need the workspace. A workspace is a work environment which stores the connection information of one or more data sources, such as the locations, names, and types of them. It also stores configured maps, layouts, 3D scenes, resources, and diagrams. The storage of the workspace can also be of multiple types. The file workspace is local and uses the .smwu or .sxwu extensions. The database workspace, on the other hand, is stored in a remote database, so its type depends on the database. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate these. Now this is the main interface of SuperMap iDesktop, and this here is the workspace manager. So we're going to go ahead and click on the workspace. And as we can see, there are two types, database workspace and file workspace. 
We're gonna go ahead and demonstrate the flat workspace for now. So we would go ahead and navigate to the location, click on the .smwu or .sxwu file and hit open. Data sources, as opposed to the workspace, stores data including point, line, polygon, spatial information and attribute information, etc. Finally, only one workspace can be open at a time and the currently open workspace is manipulated in the workspace manager. As a real workspace management tool, Workspace Manager organizes data in a tree type structure, as you can see here. A workspace contains a data source set, a map set, a diagram set, a layout set, a scene set, and a symbol library set contained under the resources tab. When opened in Workspace Manager, the original structure of the workspace will be maintained. So after we have opened all the data in the workspace, the next step is to use them to construct a map. Let's see the definition of a map. When one or more data sets are given a certain display style, a certain display style, and are displayed in the same map window, they constitute a map. So what we are really doing here is that we are adding a data set into a layer first, and then we are rendering this layer, and then we repeat this process to add data sets and render the corresponding layers. And finally, what we get in the end is what constitutes a map like this. So let's demonstrate this fact. Let's go into iDesktop, and here we have our data set. Now what we're going to do is we're going to um, render a simple map, a really simple map over here. So we're going to go on to world, we're going to say add to new map. We're going to go into rivers, we're going to drag and drop this over here. And we're going to go into lakes and drop some lakes. And there we go. So what we said was the definition of a map is when one or more data sets, we only have one data set, but when one or more data sets, are given a certain display style. So this is our display style right here and are displayed in the same map window. They're displayed in the same map window. So these three layers are being displayed in one, in one map window. So if I double click on, let's say lakes, just like that, it is going to display it in a different map window. So when we say that they're displayed in a single map window, that is what constitutes a map. So let's go ahead and close this and say no. Now, another, another thing that we are going to want to demonstrate is that the map is stored in the workspace. So the workspace must be saved after saving the map. If we forget to do that, there won't be a map when we reopen it. Also, the data in the map is from the database. So the map will be empty when we close the data source. Now let's demonstrate that fact as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our map over here, our beautiful looking map, and we are going to right click, and we are going to say save map as. Let's call it uh, world map one, okay. For simplicity reasons. And then we're gonna say okay, and then we're going to go down here and we're going to see that we have the map that we just saved right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this workspace, let's say close workspace, and I am not gonna save the workspace. I'm gonna say no. And then I'm gonna go into open file workspace and select the same world workspace again. Now, as we can see that the world map one that we saved right here is not here anymore. So that is something that we have to keep in mind at all times. So let's do that again. Let's do that again. This time let's save the workspace. So we're going to go into world. We are going to say we want the world polygon. Uh, we want some rivers on it. We want some lakes on it. And then we want to right click here and we want to save this map. Let's call it again for simplicity reasons, world map two and then say okay. Now we're going to go up again and say close this workspace. But this time we're going to say yes when it asks us to save the workspace. So let's go ahead and open the workspace again. We're going to say open file workspace, select the same workspace again, select open, and this time we see that the map is right there and saved where we left it. Let's now talk about the layers and the layer manager. Layers are a way of displaying data sets in a map window. Now this here is what a layer manager generally looks like. There are layers 
one on top of each other. So let's go into iDesktop and see what they can do. So this here is the, is the layer manager that you saw in the slide. Now the layers are operated in the layer manager with one or more layers that constitute a map. What we need to notice is layers can be understood as transparent canvases which are put into stacks in the map window. The layers on top here are going to take precedence over the layers that are on the bottom. Let's take this symbol layer here and let's put it below the polygon layer over here. So we're going to pick it up and drag it all the way down here. Now as you can see, even though the symbol layer is right here and it's enabled, the viewability of the layer is enabled, it's gone from the map right here because the layer on the top is going to take precedence. Let's reverse that and see what happens. And we have it back. Now, finally, layers and maps, they're dynamically updated as the contents of the data set change. So if the data changes, the layers and the maps connected with it will change as well. So after we finish the map, in order to print the map, it is required to create a layout which is composed of maps and elements such as the map name, legend, scale, north arrow, etc. Also, layouts are physically stored in a file or database through the workspace. The structure of a 3D scene is the same as that of a map. We can add a combination of 2D and 3D data into 3D layers in order to organize a 3D scene. Like a 2D layer, a 3D layer is also stored in a file or database through the workspace. Finally, let's talk about resources. Resources primarily manage the symbol libraries used by maps and scenes in the workspace including point symbol libraries, line type libraries, and fill symbol libraries. All three symbol libraries contain some common symbols by default. However, users may also add custom symbols of their own using the create option. The create option supports both 3D and 2D symbols. 3D symbols can be created by importing .3ds and .sgm files, while 2D symbol creation supports vectors and importing bitmap images as backgrounds. So let's summarize everything that we have seen so far. First, we can open various datasets in a workspace and then we can add them to 2D layers to organize a map or add them to 3D layers to organize a scene. If an output of a map is required, we can create a new layout to preview the map for printing. If the data is modified, the map or scene will be modified as well. The key point here is that all the datasets are stored in one or more data sources, which can be file data sources or database data sources. While the map or scene is stored in a workspace, the data sources and the workspace must be used together at all times. When we create a map or a scene, all the symbols used are from the symbol libraries contained in the resource node. Also, custom symbols can be added to the symbol libraries. Finally, a diagram is a geometrical figure that can be used to represent relationships and variations among a variety of GIS data. For example, a diagram can be used to compare GDP for every province or to count the frequency of events that have happened. Okay, so that's all for today's tutorial about Supermap fundamental concepts and data structures. For more information, please turn to the help document or contact us directly. Thank you.